Today, God has given us the third Sunday in the month of March, and I would dare say the best month of the year. That's all right. Yeah, that's all right. That's all right. The best month. The best month. You, you agree, Reverend Parkinson? The best month of the year. Amen. Amen. And we are so glad to be in God's presence. God has given us another opportunity to bless him. God has given us another opportunity to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and to enter his courts with praise and to be thankful unto him and to bless his name. God has given us another opportunity to open up our mouths and just say thank you. I don't know who got up this morning and, 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 and the first thing that you did when you opened your eyes said, God, thank you for a new day. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you. Say, maybe you didn't have, maybe you didn't do that this morning, but I want you to stand with me. Yes, you can stand. Stand at this time. I want you to take a few minutes just to say, God, thank you. Just to say thank you for the for the dawning of a new day. Just to say thank you for the gift of life. Just to say thank you for food to eat. Thank you for clothes to wear. Thank you that I got a car that I can drive. Thank you that tomorrow morning I got a job that I can go. Thank you that I got a family that loves me. Thank you that my children are saved. Thank you that I'm in good health. Thank you. Thank you. I may not have all that I want, but but thank you that I have everything that I need. I'm just trying to get about two or three of you to get a little excited about the goodness of God. I'm just trying to get a few of you to get excited about your God who is able and who is able to do above all that you can think, above all that you can even imagine. I'm just trying to get a few of you to get a little bit excited about your God who saved you, who delivered you, who set you free. When you are going through your storm, this God came and covered you. This God came and he brought you out. This God who stopped the enemy from bringing embarrassment to you and your family. Come on, give this God a worthy praise in this house. Someone ought to be able to say thank you. Hallelujah to the King of Kings. Hallelujah to the Lord of Lords. Lest we forget those of you who have tuned in via our live stream. Listen, I, I want you to know that I don't need a company of people to praise God. Because when I get up here early in the morning, I'm all by myself. As long as I've got breath, as long as you see the psalmist says, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. The fact that you're breathing this morning, it means that you qualify to praise him. The fact that you can look around, it means you qualify to praise him. Don't let no bird praise him in your place. Don't let no rock cry out in your place. So I'm going to give you about 30 seconds right now. Before we even sing, I'm going to give you about 30 seconds to lift up your hands and to open up your mouth and give the Lord a worthy praise in this house. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. With me, let us exalt his name together. I will bless the Lord. Come on, come on, come on, come on. You give him yours while I give him mine. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Yes, my soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. So magnify the Lord with me, saints. Magnify the Lord with me, saints. Magnify the Lord with me, saints. If he's done anything for you, if he's made a way for you, if he's provided for you, you ought to be able to magnify. That means to make him greater. That means to make him bigger. Make him bigger than your problem. Make him bigger than your circumstance. Make him bigger than your situations. He's bigger, he's bigger, he's bigger, he's bigger, he's bigger, he's bigger. That problem is looking small right now because he's bigger. My God, my God, he's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Father, in the name of Jesus, your people have come to praise you this morning. We've made up our minds to bless you. We said, soul, soul, you will magnify the Lord. Whether you feel like doing it, we will magnify you. We lift up our hands and magnify you. We lift our voice and magnify you. 
we put our hands together and magnify you because you're worthy. And we ask, oh God, that you accept our praise today. May it be a sweet-smelling savor in your nostrils. Be blessed by our worship, we pray. In the strong name of Jesus Christ. Come on, put your hands together and bless him one more time. I want you to look to the person next to you, say, neighbor, if you don't understand my pain, you can't understand my praise. Look to the next person, look to the next person, say, neighbor, if you don't understand my pain, you won't understand my praise. <laughs> Come on, bless him right there. Come on, bless him right there. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah.
Of every circumstance in our lives, even when we don't understand it, He still reigns. Even when we can't figure it out, He still reigns. The Bible declares that God is holy, and they that worship Him must be holy. It means that God is separate and He's apart. God calls us to be separate and to be apart. And we give to him that only he alone deserves today. Our worship. We were created to worship. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Only you are holy. Only you are worthy. Only you are wonderful. For there's no like you who is faithful and the true all my love my heart my life is a testimony Everybody join in the clan. Only you are holy. Yes, God. Only you are worthy. Only you are worthy. Only you are wonderful. 
that only you are holy. Only you are holy. Only you are holy. Only you are yes, God. Holy. Only you are holy. Only you are holy. holy. Joining with the elders and the angels, they cry, Holy, 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 only you are. We reverence you, God, we worship you, only you. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, God. It's the highest praise. It's the highest praise. It's the highest praise. It's the highest praise.
to him. Just take a few moments right now. Just take a few moments. Forget about the person on your left. Forget about the person on your right. You can even close your eyes. And lift up your heads unto the heavens. And worship your God. And worship your God. And worship your God. And worship your God. Hallelujah. 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 We say hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You may be seated in his presence. Hallelujah. Thank you. Let us pray. Amen, 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 amen. O thou of God of all, hear us when we call. Help us one and all by thy power. When the battle is won and the victory is fought, may we wear thy crown before thy face. My God, my Father, my Savior, who is our creator, God, we thank you for another Lord's day. It's a beautiful day, Lord, a day that we have never seen before, one we should never see again. God, we thank you for health and strength. We thank you for the gift of life. God, we thank you for your presence here this morning. Our Father and our God, we thank you for where you brought us from and where you are about to take us. God, we thank you for all that you've done for us and all that you're about to do. Our Father and our God, as we come this morning, 
We thank you for all of our visitors, all of our members, dear God. Pray to Lord that you look down upon us with mercy and compassion. Pray to God that we will continue to be committed to your will and to your way, to trust you and to serve you every day of our life. Our Father and our God, we thank you for allowing us to be called the children of God. For we once was blind, but now we can see. Once was lost, but now we are found in Christ Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord, for being, for making us be a royalty, dear God, a peculiar people, zealous of God. God, we thank you. And our Father and our God, as we come this morning, we thank you for our pastor who had this congregation, Lord, as he about to stand before us this morning, Lord, proclaim your word. God, we pray that your anointing would fall afresh upon him. God, we pray that you would unctionize him. Pray, dear Father, that your word would go forth like a two-edged of sword, cutting and healing at the same time. God, we pray this morning, Lord, that your word would fall on good ground. Thank you, Lord, for the one who would come to know you this morning as dear Lord and dear Savior. Our Father and our God, we pray this morning that we will not just be hearers of your word, but we will be doers of your word. Father God, we thank you for our men's choir who are about to minister to you this morning in song. God, we pray your anointing would fall upon, afresh upon our choir. God, we pray that you will remove self. Take completely over this morning. Oh, Lord, my God, my Savior and our Redeemer, we thank you, God, for our musicians. Bless them this morning in a special way. God, we pray that you would keep them, dear Lord, under the shot of your wing. God, we thank you for our young Reverend, Reverend Roll, dear God, who conducted the devotional part of the service. Father, in the name of Jesus, pray, dear God, that you will keep him humble beneath the cross of Calvary. But pray, dear God, that he would continue, dear God, to stand up for you. And allow your word declare, young man, I call you because you're strong, and old man, because you know the way. Bless them this morning and especially. And our Father, our God, our Savior, and our Redeemer, we pray this morning, dear God, for all of our visitors, dear God, keep us, dear God, keep us, dear Lord, committed, Lord, committed, Lord, to serve you from the depth of our heart. For we acknowledge, Lord, that you're soon to come. For your word declare, behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to pay every man according to their word. And our Father and our God, in the name of Jesus, whatever we do, dear God, that we will do it with all our might, with all our strength, dear God. Be committed to you, God, you, Lord, for you sit high, you look slow, your eyes run truth for the earth. God, you sees everything. You knows everything. You hear there everywhere. But God, you say we have not because we ask not. God, you said ask and it shall be given. And our Father and our God, we come this morning standing upon the shallness of God, knowing that heaven and earth will pass away, but your words stand forever. Oh Lord, my God, my Savior and my Redeemer, God, we acknowledge that we are in the ending of time. Soon and very soon, we shall see the King. And Father and our God, help us, dear Lord. Help us, dear God. Help us one and all, dear God, to stand up, stand up for Jesus and be a soldier of the cross. In the name of Jesus the Christ, these blessings are ours. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Omnipotent. and grace.
Everyone put your hands together and press the name of the Lord in this place. Bless the name of the Lord in this place. Amen. Amen. At this time of our service, we wish to acknowledge anyone that may be visiting at this time. If you're visiting, we're not going to ask you to say a word. We just want to acknowledge your presence. It may be your first time. It may be your second time, or even your third time. But you're not a member. I, I, I see you. I see you. I see you. You're not a member of this local assembly. But we just want to acknowledge you at this time. So you can please stand. Please stand. All those that are visiting, please stand at this time. Thank you so much. So we have Brother Rudolph Farrington, family and friends of Benjamin and Akira McKenzie. Come on, let's put our hands together and welcome them. I believe they are a part of the christening party. The ushers are giving out a visitor's packet that we want you to fill out. There are special information. Also, at, at the end of the service, we want you to stop at the hospitality desk. We have a special gift for you. Please do stop by and collect that on your way out. And we thank God for our brother here. I, I, I didn't get his name, but we welcome you. That, that's the first, Okay. Thank you so much. God bless you, sir. God bless you. Thank you for standing, and you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Yes, Salem, do that, do that. And if you are even a first-time viewer to our, our live stream platform, please take the moment, take a moment and say, I am a first-time viewer, and our media department will respond to you in kind. Thank you so much. And at this time of our service, we also want to challenge you to not only worship God even in spirit and truth but to also worship him by your giving to worship him by your giving the apostle Paul challenged the the churches at the church at Corinth and even when he was going throughout the Macedonia he collected offerings for the church at Jerusalem who was going through a very difficult time because there was a famine that was going on at that time and he speaks in 2 Corinthians, he speaks about the church in Macedonia who gave out of their lack. He says that they gave out of their means. And, and what he was saying was that they only was able to give what they were able to give. Even though it was difficult for them to give out of the, the, the small portion that they had, but they gave. And he said something else. He said that they gave themselves to the Lord. I challenge all of us that we firstly give ourselves to the Lord so that when we give back to him, no matter how small it may be, because don't look at what the other person is giving. Give as the Lord has so blessed you. Give as the Lord has provided to you. Someone may be able to give more than you. That's fine. God does not look at how much that person gives. God looks at the heart. God looks at the posture of your heart. He looks at the fact that you are giving and you're giving faithfully. You're giving consistently. And when you give to the Lord, the Lord will always give back to you. You give hands and feet to the gospel when you give. If you don't give, if you, if you keep your hands like this, if you keep your hands like this, it means nothing is going out. But also there's also a reverse to that. If nothing is going out, it also means nothing is coming in. So as you give today, give with the understanding that God will indeed provide everything that you need because you're giving in faith. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for willful givers today. Thank you for those who have already given themselves to you, God. The book of James tells us that every good and perfect gift comes from the Father above the father of lights there's no shifting there's no shadow of turning since you are the one who gives lord it is our duty it is our joy it is our pleasure it is a privilege of ours to give back to you so we ready our hearts we ready ourselves to give to you knowing that you will give back to us good measure pressed down shaken together and running over we bless you we praise you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We'll now turn our attention to the media department will give us our announcements for the week.
Superintendent Emeritus Reverend Wilton A. McKinsey will be celebrating his 40th pastoral anniversary this afternoon at 3 p.m. at the South Beach Union Baptist Church. Salemites are invited to attend. Funeral services for the late Ellison Tate, nephew of Alois Thompson, Veronica and Stephanie Ferguson, and uncle of Stephen Francis will be held here at Salem this coming Wednesday, March 20th at 11 a.m. Our pastor, along with Sister Prescola and other members of our congregation, leave this week to attend the Exuma District Convention scheduled for March 20th through 24th in Mount Thompson, Exuma. They meet this year under the theme, Serving God in Challenging Times, deduced from Joshua chapter 24, verses 14 through 17. Birthday greetings are extended to Stephanie Taylor Smith, Aaron Brown, Edgar O. Moxie, Ronnie McKenzie, and all those who celebrated a birthday during this past week. We pray God's continued blessings upon each of you. We invite all of you to join us tomorrow evening at 6 p.m. for our Hour of Power session via Zoom. Remember to join us each Sunday evening at 10 p.m. for our weekly radio broadcast of Open Doors on ZNS 1540 AM radio. Join us for Sunday School. At 9 a.m., there is a class for every age. At 10 a.m. is Junior Church from ages 5 through 13. Join us on Wednesdays for Family Night. On Wednesdays at 6 p.m., join us for Baptismal Preparation Classes. At 7 p.m., we have Kids in Action for ages 5 through 11 and Royal Teens for ages 12 through 18. Adults can join us for Bible study at 7 p.m. in the main sanctuary as our pastor leads us for one hour in the study of God's Word. Rehearsals for Destined Dance Ministry will take place on Fridays at 6 p.m. Children's choir rehearsals will take place on Saturdays at 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. Attention Kingdom citizens, teens, and kids all across the earth. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, needs our help with an important mission. Although Jesus has already defeated sin and death on the cross and made a way for all of us to live in the kingdom of heaven with him, the enemy is trying to stop God's people from entering the kingdom. That's where we come in. My name is Jericho and I am not alone. Along with my friends, Scott, our Lord, Lana, and Ruth, the Tree of Life, we are the Guardians of the Kingdom. Come join us on April 12th and 13th at the Teen and Kids Conference at Salem Union Baptist Church. And remember, we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. See you there. Family Fun Day, which will be on Saturday, April 20th. Plan to be there. Tickets are now available from the hospitality desk in the foyer or from your house leader. Join Salem's Women in Ministry for Bon Appetit, the Hot Cross Bun Masterclass, a divine baking experience that's sure to spice up your Easter preparations. Bring your ingredients and gather round as we delve into the art of hot cross bun making. Led by seasoned professional Reverend Raymond Roll, this hands-on class promises to elevate your baking skills to heavenly heights. Don't miss this chance to knead, shape, and bake your way to the perfect hot cross bun on Thursday, March 28th in the C.W. Saunders' Fellowship Hall. Mark your calendars and join us for a deliciously enlightening event. Ingredient and utensils list will be shared during the upcoming week. Our Mighty Men's Ministry will be holding their monthly meeting this coming Thursday, March 21st at 6 p.m. in the C.W. Saunders' Fellowship Hall. The focus for the evening would be the importance of mentoring boys with guest speaker Superintendent Leonardo Burrows. All of the men of Salem are expected to be in attendance for this very timely topic. Let us continue to pray for the sick, aged, infirmed, and shut-ins of this and other congregations. Sisters Hannah Brooks, Edvilda Gibson, Myrtle Knowles, Corrine Brainin, Malvina Brainin, Brenda Riley, Christine Francis, Muriel Sears, Julia Smith, Creola Taylor, Veronica Ferguson, Susan Nixon, Sister Stephanie Stewart, as well as brothers James Moss, Lissardo Moxie, Ordrich Balfour, and Stanley Burroughs. Thank you for joining us. This has been Salem's News. Stay connected with us through Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe. Have a great week. Well, good morning. Good morning to you. Let me say, or let me apologize for the, um, the news not being broadcast in here. The reason why we stay quiet is because even though it's not broadcasting in here, it is broadcasting on the stream. So if you see us staying quiet during the announcements, that is what is happening. I know to keep it quiet while that is going on because that is actually happening 
they'll make sure fix it next time. And while we are here, they'll check it before we come on and do it. But we thank God for them, and we thank God for their technical difficulties all the time with these things. So let me extend my personal welcome to all of you, all of the visitors who have come. So good to see all of you uh, today. I welcome all of you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ here in the main sanctuary. Also welcome all of you who are watching us via the live stream. There's so many other platforms you can be watching, but we thank God for you joining Salem today. So Salem, would you just welcome them now, please, all of our live stream audience. Uh, those of us we have missed, um, Brother Benjamin and Sister Dekira for a while, <clears throat> they were off the island, actually. Benji is off working. And while they were off, something happened while they were off. And they came back to make sure they dedicate their child to the Lord. Let's give a hand to Benjamin and Dekira. Came back to his church to um, dedicate his baby to the Lord. Benji's a boy or a girl? Boy. It's a boy. Thank God for him. It's a boy. We have another male. Uh, amen. And that male, we're going to declare right now that he is going to get on the kingdom of the Lord's side. He's going to join the family of God. He is not going to join the other kingdom and contribute to them, he's going to contribute to the kingdom of God. Let me just remind the men, uh, Reverend Lancaster, the leader of, leader of the Mighty Men's Ministry, this coming Thursday at 6 p.m., um, there will be a presentation by, um, I don't know, I don't know the rank, Superintendent Burroughs. He's coming to talk about mentoring, our mentoring program, our mentoring boys. It begins at 6 p.m., uh, I believe it's in the cafe. In the main hall, in the, in the fellowship, in the fellowship hall, uh, he's going to come and do a presentation. So please, all men, would you join Reverend Lancaster, the Mighty Man's Ministry, as uh, Superintendent Burroughs comes to uh, present on mentoring boys. Also, I stand just to um, encourage you to spend about ten minutes. It should take about ten minutes or fifteen minutes. I will be. I'll watch the clock and make sure cut short if I need to, but I need 10 to 15 minutes with you. I will just be sharing with you our Influence 100 program, and we are finally ready to launch it, and we want every believer to participate in it. So we'll be sharing all of the package with you when we are done, showing you what you need to do, because on next, not next week, but on, we want to give you two weeks, so on Easter Sunday, you will return, and you'll return your cards with the names and everything of those you'll be praying for, and the program will kick off. Amen? So I welcome you, my brothers and sisters, to participate. Every believer in this church needs to participate. I'll take 10 minutes after the service, please. Don't leave when you see the sermon is done. I'll be ending a little early to make sure and give you time so that you can do that. Amen? Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Well, it's word time, Salem. It is word. It is word time, Salem. Yeah, 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 yeah. Heaven and earth will pass away, but the word of God will remain the flowers may fail and, and 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 the plants may die but the word of god stands and it remains forever are you excited about the word i don't i, I don't know about you but 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 you you I, I, give me a little bit more than that if you are truly excited about the word of god can someone just say amen for the word of god today we are empowered by the spirit of the living god we we can't do anything without his power and our pastor as he continues to speak to us about being that kingdom church that is empowered by the spirit to do great exploits to take territories to root up and to tear down can i tell you, you can't do that without the power of the spirit and influence 100 as the pastor is going to even be talking to us today you can't do it without the power of the spirit so as he comes to continue to 
and, and, and give us instructions in regards as to how God is going to do what he's going to do in and through us because God has no hands but ours. He has no feet but ours. He's going to empower you to be able to go out to do great exploits for the kingdom. So I pray that you would prepare your hearts to receive the word of God today. But before he comes, the men's ministry choir will minister. And after that, our pastor will declare the word of God in the power of the spirit. Amen.
Amen. Just find your way down, amen. Keep playing that. You know, you could sing all kind of, you could listen to songs, but ain't nothing like when men's voice sing it. What you say? Not like when men singing it. I've found that I am Jesus, my Redeemer. And they sang this morning. Yes, I am Jesus, I will never stray. For it will lead me to the. One more time. Say, I've found. That I may leading to the home of God. I found that I may lead in my redeemer's home. And from this I may, Jesus, I will never spring. For it, for it will lead me to the home of God. Come on, bless the Lord one more time. Amen, 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 amen. Good singing, man. Thank God for you. We certainly want to give God thanks and praise today. What an experience we're having in this place today, man. You all came fired up like you all had breakfast this morning. <laughs> you all had breakfast this morning, man. Church, you all had breakfast this morning. We praise God for the worship. Thank God for the singing. Thank God for all of you who have come today in this time of celebration. We continue to lift up um, Sister Julia and uh, family. Sister Julia Smith, she laid her mother to rest yesterday. Sister Rosalie Sims. And Julia is here today. Thank God, Julia, for your strength to be here today. Let me bless God for her. And so Sam's been working in this church for a long time. He served in the Sunday school. Helped to teach your children and grandchildren. And she worked in the government system, had to educate your children. And man, we give God thanks and praise. She's gone home to be with the Lord. So we bless God for all of you who come and who serve. Make that, make that your commitment. That when your time comes, because all of us can move someday, that we'll have a good report, yeah? I mean, I, just, I don't preach eulogy, so I don't big people up and all that stuff and try to lie about people and funerals. I don't have to worry about that because I only come in to preach the word. But make sure that whoever gets up to eulogize you, they'll have some good words to say about you and they ain't got to try lie. That you did actually make your contribution to God's kingdom. Make sure now that you don't get all the accolades for all the stuff that happened outside. Because I noticed some people have some long stories in their obituary, but everything they did in life, except they did not know the Lord. That's a wasted life. For God's sake, don't let that happen to you. Amen? All right. Acts chapter 2. This is where we find our text for the day. And I'm going to read four verses verses 37 to 41 that's where we'll spend our time today when the people heard this I got a little echo on my mic there if you just turn that just bring it down a little bit where we're in the studio just bring my mic down a little bit it's echoing a bit okay when the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent. Be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. 
you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promises for you and your children and for all who are far off. All whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words he warned them and he pleaded with them. Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized. And about 3,000 were added to their number that day. Lead me, Lord. Lead me in thy just me. Amen. If you're wondering why I tell this story up front a lot about, I start normally in the book of Genesis when I'm talking about the Spirit of God. It's because it's very important for us to understand what we lost so that you will appreciate what we gain through Christ's death, burial, and resurrection, and the coming of the Holy Spirit. Because if you miss that, you're just preaching little stories. But if you can get a grasp of what happened, you'll better appreciate what we got when the Holy Spirit was poured out on us. I thought I'd say that up front. So here we go. As we continue our focus this year on the necessity of dependence on the Spirit, I want to remind us of why we need the Holy Spirit so much. God's desire, as was stated in Genesis 1 and 2, was to create this species of mankind that would have dominion, or govern his renovated earth. And that mankind would do this under his rule. What we mean by that is that man is a vassal king underneath a great king who is God. Man does not rule or govern the earth in and of himself. He is doing it he is a subordinate to God. All of you who work for any organization, you have those who are the CEO of the company, and then everybody else under there are subordinates. You help to carry out the work under their management. I know some of y'all Bahamians, y'all like to go on the people's job and think it's yours. It's not yours. That means you need to carry out your function under someone else. God never gave man the rule of the earth and say, go handle it yourself. You do that under God. 
Never mind that now. Some must like to take the rule from God. We try. All right. So the reason that God gave it to man was he wanted man to have dominion and to subdue Satan who was already roaming over the earth. You see? So man's authority was to subdue the devil. Okay? And what did God do to do that? He created him and breathed his spirit into him. And he came alive. And now he was ready to do that. But he is not ready to deal with the devil until he comes alive. And what brings him alive? The breath of God. So man cannot accomplish anything without God's spirit. He's dead. Man is so brilliant that this man that God breathes his bread into is so brilliant that God um, makes a garden, places him there. And he told this man, you go ahead and you name every animal, every cattle, every bird. You go ahead and you name them. And the Bible says that whatever the man called the animals, the cattle and the birds, that was their name. And they carried out their character based on what Adam called them. That's a supernatural man. But he becomes supernatural only after God breathes into him. Trying to get you all somewhere. But watch this. Before God allowed man to participate in reproducing these godly children to overcome the devil, God allowed the man to go through a test. Somebody say test. You know, I wonder why God is doing this, but everybody has to go through that. If you are going to have authority over people, God will always give you a To check you out. It's obvious that God did not want to have a kingdom of robots. He did not want to make a people who just about just carrying out everything that he says because they are robots. No, God wanted to create a species that would return or respond to his love in making them by being obedient to his commands. That's how you demonstrate your love. By being obedient to the commands. And you cannot demonstrate that obedience unless you are able to make a choice. So God gives man the choice. He says, you know, Adam, you're free to eat. What? Adam may have no children. God is not going to allow him to have one baby. Until and unless he goes through the test. This tree, Adam, don't touch this one. You could eat from all of the others, but don't touch that one. That's choice. Amazingly, humans have a problem with that. God said, don't touch one. You could have all the rest. Just don't touch one. God says to a man, get married to one woman. Don't touch the rest. He just got to touch the rest. Fortunately, Adam went out and he disobeyed God. When he was tempted, they ate the fruit and what brought him alive left him. I'm trying to help you all with the Holy Ghost, y'all. What brought him alive, it died. 
That's how come he becomes spiritually dead, Genesis chapter 3, and he is naked and runs away from God. Because no one can stay in the presence of God naked. You cannot be in the presence of God without the Holy Spirit covering you. And so, you know, like human beings, they go and then they try to cover it up. He sowed fig leaves to try to replace the Holy Ghost. You try to get natural stuff to cover a spiritual problem. I want you cover it up by going shopping. You cover it up with all kinds of stuff because you're hiding something that's wrong on the inside. I don't know if anybody knows what I'm talking about, but that's the And that can't work. Some things I tell you, my brothers, my brothers and sisters, only the blood of Jesus could cover. You can't cover yourself. But God is so gracious and merciful that he didn't let it go far. Genesis chapter 3 verse 15, he said, man, I got to find a way to make man spiritually alive again. Would you just give God praise for his grace and mercy? I can't leave him out there naked. I got to find a way to get them back in. And he promises his own son. He promises Jesus all the way back in Genesis. Do you know why, brothers and sisters, Jesus had to come? Because we lost the Holy Ghost. I dwell among. Every time you listen in the scriptures, God wants to dwell among his people. He wants to dwell among his people. God wants to hang out with us. That's why he made us. You know, before Adam got in trouble, the Bible says, in the cool of the day, he used to walk and hang out and fellowship with them. And man, God lost that. It was not only man that lost something, God lost something too. Fast forward New Testament. Jesus comes. He rises on the scene. He was baptized by John. And watch this now. The spirit descended on him like a dove. I, I almost the ox, I'm trying to get there. Stay with me. By doing this, God was demonstrating that even his son needs the Holy Ghost to operate in the world. I hope you know that when Jesus went and got baptized by John, that was called a baptism of repentance. Did Jesus have anything to repent of? That told us right there. He came to take our peace. He subjected himself to a baptism of repentance. By one lower than him. Then that same spirit that came on him led him to the wilderness, watch this, to be tempted by the devil. What happened to Adam? Before Adam was able to reproduce one offspring, the devil came and tempted him. Before Jesus gets an opportunity to reproduce spiritual children, the devil comes and tempts him. You got to follow the story of the Bible. So the devil takes him in the wilderness and the devil is going to tempt him because he does not want Jesus to come and reproduce spiritual children. That means he's trying to get the Holy Ghost out of Jesus. Just how he got Adam to give up the Holy Spirit, he's trying to do the same thing with Jesus. Because without the Holy Ghost, you can't have spiritual The devil got the same tricks. He's a one-trick pony. And let me tell you, that one-trick pony, the devil have that powerful because he coming at the main thing, the Holy Spirit. 
If you spiritually dead, he got you. He can't afford for you to come alive. So, after Jesus passed the test, now he is able to go and preach. Jesus never called one disciple to follow him unless he passed that test. All three evangelists, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, every one of them records the story of Jesus' baptism, and you'll, understand, you'll see it. When the Spirit comes upon him, then he goes in the wilderness and he is tested. Then he calls his first disciple. No starting of ministry until you pass the test. And when, you, when the devil couldn't get the spirit out of him, it was time for him to start his ministry. And I want you to watch how he starts his ministry. Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. It says, he just finished now. He baptized, went in the wilderness. And then it says, from that time on. From what time on? From the time that he passed the test in the wilderness. Jesus began to preach. What did he preach? Repent. For the kingdom of heaven is near. What's the key word? Repent. Keep that in your mind. Jesus was laying down the ground rules for entering the kingdom. And first it is baptism by the spirit. Which came after repenting. Baptism by the Spirit that came after repenting. Remember I told you that Jesus didn't have anything to repent for, but he got baptized anyhow. Spirit baptized him. Mm -hmm. Repentance. And after repentance, the baptism of the Spirit. If the spirit is the door to God's kingdom, repentance is the key to opening the door. Could I say that one more time? Huh? If the spirit is the door for entering God's kingdom, then repentance, and when I say that, I mean true repentance, I can get that in a minute. Repentance is the key that unlocks that door. You cannot get into the kingdom unless you re. The kingdom, you see, can only be populated by repentant people. And not just once. You repent to get in. And then any other time, because the Holy Spirit is in you, he will convict you of sin. And when he convicts you of sin, what do you do? Repentance is a big theme in God's kingdom. So it's key to understand what it is and what it's not. First, repentance does not mean only to feel sorry for one's sin. Repent means to change one's mind. And then after your mind is changed, then you need to act that out. There must, my brothers and sisters, be a turning. You have to change your mind about the way you are living and then turn and go the next way. That's repentance. That's why everybody that walks the aisle and makes a commitment to Jesus does not necessarily mean that they save. Their salvation will be proved by their walk. You can't get saved and live the same way. Oh, I'm going to get too fast that I can almost get here. Listen, man. 
the church, the kingdom of God is made up, supposed to be made up of repentant sinners. Some people, the church full up with people who have never re. Now, let, let, let's keep moving. Amazingly, so many people I mention are trying to get into the kingdom of God without a changed heart. You all notice us, I taking my time today. Again, I just can't end when it's time to end. But you got to get this. That's why we have too much church folk today. They church folk because they, are, they come to church and do everything that looks churchified, but their hearts will never change. And so they act one way in here and go outside and live another way. And that starts with the pulpit. That starts with the pulpit. Y'all watching the news lately? So God is exposing unrepentant pastors. They're acting like they're in the kingdom, but they're in the kingdom of the devil. Because they have never changed. Why well, Jesus put that word out and a lot of us, we, we didn't pay attention to that. That's why the first thing he said, I'm going to preach the kingdom and the kingdom begins with repentance. I can explain that a little deeper as we move on and close. Now amazingly, as much as Jesus preached and taught his disciples about the kingdom of God, gave them examples and even gave them a little taste of the kingdom, gave them a little preview. By working signs, wonders, miracles, it went right over their head. They weren't paying attention there. They didn't get it. They were caught up, you see, in their religious worldview of God's kingdom. They were looking for a king who would rescue them from their Roman oppressors and from the rule so from the rule of the Roman oppressors, and they wanted to rule from sitting on the throne in Jerusalem. So their ideas were like the Gentiles. We want rule people. You all know anybody like that? There's a ruler on every job. There's a church boss in here. There's boss, boy, and they ain't a boy. Ain't nobody telling the boss, but they're in charge on the job. You all, you all just work with anybody like that. They're Gentile thinkers. They rule over people. Jesus said, in my kingdom, it is the opposite. We rule by service. We don't rule by Not by might. You all helped me in the other day. <laughs> Not by power, but by my spirit. It takes the spirit to create a servant leader. Too much bosses around the place. Sit here. Don't go over there. You all know who church this is? And I, and I try to wonder, you all bring church here? Did you all bring the church here? Okay. Some of you all met a buy when pure one went there, but you all ain't bring the church here. That's the physical stuff. I thought that Jesus says, upon this rock, I'll build. So the only person who owns church is, you all talk to me. Ah, yeah. You know, we like to own things. So the disciples, Jesus is trying to tell them for years, 
Man, the kingdom is about repentant people, about getting your heart together. They're thinking about position. Power. But what they really needed was to be rescued from themselves, from their captivity and oppression of sin. That's what Jesus was trying to get them to do. They worried about oppression from the Romans. Jesus tries to tell them, you need to worry about yourself. You are the greatest problem you have. And the only way to fix that is to fix your Man, if we could get some heart transplants in this country, I tell you, we wouldn't have any more murder. We wouldn't need no more policemen around here working on murders and criminal, all this kind of stuff, if the man's heart is changed. Man, you all give God praise for that, man. You know, while you all clapping, I want you to think about this now. While you clapping, if I said to you that the greatest problem that man has is he has a heart problem, believe me, you know that the government can't fix his heart. You all stay with me now. <laughs> so who are the people that could fix man's heart? The people who are sitting right here who are born again because God is is the only person that could change a man's heart and you are his representative down here. We are agents for the kingdom. We're selling insurance. We're selling blessed assurances. You're the representatives. That means we got the biggest job down here. So when things are going wrong, my brothers and sisters, at the end of the day, it's right here that could fix it. So I just got you to confess that you need to be working. And we're going to work on that. Remember, at the end of the service, we're going we to deal with that. Once it's taken on the disciples, Luke now, we reach to the book of Acts. Luke records in Acts. That even after Jesus was raised from the dead, they didn't been through all that, they still didn't get it. They were still seeking power and position. Listen to them. Acts 1.6. Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? Man, the man then raised from the dead, ready to begin, and they're still talking about where my seat where my position? We ready now, Jesus? You all know we say it. Oh, we ready now? Like they some political party and they getting in power. It's our time. Well, and it seemed like every, it seemed like every, you know, every five years or someone done our time to get back in power. What you think they won't get back in power for? Man, I want the people now to start thinking. What do you think people want to get in power for? Years ago, we got fooled by many of them who told us that they wanted to get back in power to serve the people. That's what you're supposed to get in power for, you know. Not to enrich yourself, but to serve. I ain't calling no name, but you all find a couple of them who read his willing after the election data. So don't get fooled. All right? And I'm trying to tell you, I don't see any of them doing it. You know why? Because they don't have the power of the Holy Ghost in them. You know, and sometimes be foolish enough to believe that unsaved people got hard to do these things. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Believe me, some of them are all out. They got all kind of things they got to do. Payback favors and 
But I'm telling you, the only person you could trust, my brothers and sisters, with this kind of stuff, are God and his people. Stay with me. These people been with, with Jesus, they, they ain't walk with me and you, you know. They walk with Jesus for three and a half years. And they were still selfish. Still looking out for themselves. They've been with Jesus, y'all. They've been with him, watch him praying, watch him doing miracles, watch him doing all this kind of stuff. But could I tell you, without the power of the Holy Ghost on the inside of them, they were still worldly. Jesus said to them, listen, man, I am about to restore the kingdom. But I'm not coming to sit on no throne in Jerusalem. I am coming to empower you. And how I'm going to do that is by sitting on the throne in your hearts. That's how it's going to get done. And listen, he was about to tell them, I'm not just coming for the Jews. I'm coming to sit on the throne of all men's heart. From every tongue and every nation. So that what happened before Jews, what was just in Jerusalem, I've come to give it to the entire world. Y'all give God praise. Sir. That's how you get in. So Jesus was saying to them, when he Name those in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and then to the other parts of the earth. What Jesus was saying was, this Jewish thing is finished with. I am coming to have a multinational kingdom. There are going to be people from every sphere. Every race, every color. And every creed have come to throw the door wide open. You better bless God for that because that's how you get in. Now, I want you to keep focused now. Listen. You know on that day, none of those persons that got saved were Gentiles. All them people that had been in Jerusalem, they were Jews. They came from everywhere but gentiles ain't welcome to celebrate pentecost so let, let's get it together now ain't no gentiles around this these are jews and they were only interested in things coming to do they no different from y'all they didn't want anybody else to come <laughs> Y'all remember my name, Jonah? God sent Jonah to go preach to the Ninevites. Jonah look up at God and say, God, you forget. You forgetting God. He said, you can't send me to them. Do you know God who the Ninevites are? He's talking to God now. They wicked people, God, they punish us. Just to show you, God, how serious I am about this, I ain't going. Jonah did not want to give his God and his grace and mercy to outsiders. God was just for the Jews. And Jonah ain't hide it. Jonah said, God, I know you. I know you, God. I know what you can do. That's why I don't want to go. Because God, if I go and preach, I know you can save them. <laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy. God, if I send, I know when I preach repentance, they come in and you can save them. And I don't want them saved. I 
listen, I want y'all to know there's plenty Jonas around here, you know. Plenty Jonas. Before y'all show rock a Jonah, there's plenty Jonas around here. Y'all don't want some people in y'all church. Y'all don't want some people in y'all group. Y'all know you just keep them out. <laughs> I can leave that one there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. God, I know you can save them, and you know we don't want them in the church. And you know what God, God has a sense of humor. And since Jonah decided that he was not going to go where God sent him, God says, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to get you to do it, Jonah, and you're going to do it if you got to go in a submarine. <laughs> you don't want to go by land. So I'm going to get you there by sea. Some of y'all wake up, man. <laughs> and it wasn't a cruise ship. He went there in the belly of a... Now, the Bible never say he went there in a whale. But, you know, we say whale. It's just a great fish. <laughs> he might have been a big Bahamian group of, we don't know. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, he went. Because he was forced to go. For God's sake, let's don't be like Jonah. Just what Jonah didn't want to do, that's the very thing these Jews don't want to do. Stay with me with them. And God said to those disciples that he's Jewish disciples, guess what? The kingdom is going to be expanded and you Jews are going to be the ones to take it to the Gentile nations. You are going to make the kingdom multinational. As much as you don't want to let them in, guess what? You can go and carry it to the nations. And just to show you, I'm going to bring them all right here so that when you Jews come here and you go back home, you can carry the gospel with you to all of the nations. Y'all give God praise for his wisdom. The Jews were going to make the kingdom of God multinational. Parthians, Cappadocia, Africa, they took the gospel everywhere when they left that place. Ain't no Gentiles took that there. When they went back home, the Jews took it there. So I said to you, my brothers and sisters, God's gospel is going to be preached. And if he got to force some hands, it's going to be preached. So the day of Pentecost came. Bible says it came with signs and wonders. And the people asked a question. They asked a question the other day. They're going to ask another question now. They asked, what does this mean? Peter stands up. And Peter begins to tell them the story. Notice that Peter never jumped right to the main thing. He started out by telling them about their history. He talked about the patriarchs. He brought it right home. He said, and you Jews, you kill the prophets that God sent. He bring it right down to the point where he said, and last of all, you kill this prophet, you kill the Messiah, Jesus the Christ. He came to save you all, and you all killed him. They asked the question, what does this mean? And he took them down the path. And the Bible says, because it was the Holy Ghost had come now, they were convicted. This time they were convicted. What shall we do? What does Peter say? Repent! Same word that Jesus used. Repent and be baptized, every one of you. So that you will get the gift of the Spirit. 
Peter was telling the Jewish people, listen, y'all done mess up big. You done kill Jesus. But praise God, he rose again from the dead. <laughs> now, this same Jesus that you kill and rose again from the dead, you need to change your mind about him. It's time for you to accept that he is God's Messiah and that you ought to follow him. That's what it meant to repent. It means they had to accept the same Jesus they killed. That he is now Lord. That could only be done. Those people, this could only be done when the spirit moves on your heart. All right, watch this. What's the next imperative? And I'm going to close on this. Verse 38, not only do you need to repent, but you need to be baptized. Now, while the Bible speaks of many fillings of the Holy Spirit, the Bible speaks of two baptisms. Mm -hmm. The first baptism is done by God when true repentance takes place. God baptizes the believer with his spirit into the mystical body of Christ. First step. When you, when you receive Christ, he baptizes you by the spirit into that body. And nobody ever knows when that happens. It's something that happens on the... Mm -hmm. That's the first baptism, right? Having done that, the next baptism that a believer needs is water baptism. And why are you doing that? The water baptism is to demonstrate that not only did you repent and change your minds about who Jesus was, but that you are willing to go the next step and identify with Jesus in his death, his burial, and resurrection. That's what water baptism demonstrates. Give God praise now, if you, if you, you understand them too? Uh-huh. Repent, baptized by the Holy Spirit into the mystical body of Christ. That's the Catholic church, the worldwide church, the general church. That's what you can't see with your spiritual eyes. The baptism, water baptism, means you do something publicly that you are identifying with Jesus in his death, his burial, and his resurrection. And that's what baptism in water does. As you go down, you demonstrate death. And as you come up, you demonstrate that you are rising to newness of life. You got that? And what that does is, normally a local assembly does that. And your name goes on the roll in that local assembly. Now you can't mix these two up. Baptism in water is not going to get you into the mystical body of Christ. You've got to get the first step right. You've got to repent first. And then God baptizes you into his kingdom. And then you get water baptized. And then you join a local assembly where you join the GNN. You all remember that? Come on, man. You all been to church last week. Give God praise. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You join the GNN. Every church member is supposed to be a part of the Good News Network. And I am about to give you an opportunity to do that. Right now, in a few minutes, every person who has repented, you are baptized into God's church. Having been baptized into God's kingdom, 
you need to be water baptized. And your water baptism is to demonstrate that you identify. I want you all to know as I close. For Jews to do that, that's a big deal. You mean to tell me you are going to identify with the imposter? Talk to me. You mean to tell me this man that you spat on? This man that you say, give us Barabbas. You can identify with him? How could you identify with a man you said is cursed? Because the law says curse is every man that hangs on a tree. Yet that is what baptism signifies. See, in our culture, we don't really appreciate it. But I'm trying to get you to uh, understand the culture of scripture. That you understand the history. That when you go down in water baptism, you are identifying with Jesus Christ's life, death, burial, and resurrection. And in order to do that, you've got to re- Family in Christ, um, <laughs> sadly what is missing from the church of today is we are reversing God's order for entrance into the kingdom. Peter said, repent and be baptized. Not be baptized and then try to get people to repent. See, we're trying to get people in the church and say, go be this and go be that. And I hope you get saved on the way. That's like some of you get married to someone and say, I hope they get saved later. Get it right. You got to make it right first. Listen, man, we got to pay attention to Jesus. Seek first. We seek in our own stuff first. So we go and the people tell us, son, you're old enough now. Girl, you're old enough now. Time for you to get baptized. Then you say get saved, you know. It's time for you to get baptized. And I believe that's what gave a lot of people a bad impression or the wrong teaching about baptism. Baptism is for repented or repentant people. Don't go down a wet sinner. Come back up. A dry sinner. Just get wet in the water. When you have not been soaked in the Holy Ghost. You all get that? Baptism can't give you the spirit. But baptism is necessary to demonstrate something. That's why you need to get baptized. If you are part of our program the last couple of weeks, the sessions that Minister Greg did, you would understand. We laid it out clearly. You get born again, you go into uh, the baptismal class. But you get born again first. Go in the baptismal class. Get baptized. And when you come out there, you go in discipleship class so you could join the Good News Network. Because you can't tell anybody anything that you don't know. So my family in Christ, I'm going to ask all of us to stand. We were born again. If you are not born again, this is your opportunity to come and make it right. And 
And so first of all, before I say a prayer for all of us, a prayer of repentance for all of us, maybe there's someone in here today who does not know Jesus as Lord and Savior. You have never repented. And so I'm going to ask you, if that's you, and you are in here today, I'm going to ask you to make a commitment to following Christ. If that's you, would you come please? Anybody in here, you're not saved. You've never repented of your sin to become a member of the mystical body of Christ. Anybody in here never made a commitment to Christ and you want to do that? Would you come at this time? Is there one person who wants to do that? What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Anyone? What can make me? Is there one? <laughs> Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Singing, oh, precious is Oh, that me no other found nothing but the blood. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to give you thanks and praise for coming down here to earth for giving up divinity and taking on humanity thank you God for giving up all of heaven's glory to come and get the spirit back on the inside of us God we praise you we honor you. We adore you for all that you have done. And making it possible. For us to be able to get a key. And to turn the lock. To open the door to the kingdom of God. And so God for every believer in here today. I pray God right now. That you would grant us a spirit of repentance. God for the things that we omit and commit. We repent of them God. You said God. Way back even in the Old Testament. That if your people that are called by your name. If we would humble ourselves. And pray, seek your face and turn. You will forgive our sins and you will heal our land. Father, forgive us and heal our land. Our land is sick, God, and we are in need of you. And so, God, we are asking you to do it right now. Do it for us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen? Amen. Amen. Have a seat, please. Give God praise and thanks. Our media department, you could actually take us off now. We're going to go into... I want to give every believer an opportunity to participate in sharing the gospel in praying for your unsaved family, your unsaved friends, unsaved co-workers, unsaved schoolmates, classmates. I'm going to ask the ushers if they would come at this time. This is a program that we did for the last four weeks. Uh, a number of you were not able to attend. But we still Thank you so much for watching our broadcast today. 
I'm so delighted that you decided to join Salem, the church with the open door. I trust that today's message has indeed been a blessing to you. If you've prayed the prayer of salvation, we want to walk with you. We have counseling and resources available to help you with the next steps in your spiritual journey. Please connect with us via email, our website, or our social media pages listed on the screen. Until next time, keep having a mind for truth and a heart for God. I'll see you next time.